Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the regression analysis lecture. Um, again, here we still are uh, learning about the uh, uh, methods of selecting a uh, model. Um, and here on the topic of all possible regression selection procedure. Um, in previous videos, we've learned about the R squared, R adjusted squared, CP criterion, and press criterion. So to sum up um, all these methods, we will just look at the examples uh, on how to use these approaches. And then we will uh, just uh, look at the examples in this book. Uh, let's have a look. This is on chapter, uh, I think, yeah, here on chapter six of these books. Um, so let's see the example in this uh, regression book, okay, example 6.2. So this is about the data on executive salaries and then they want to, if you want to look at, let's probably look at example 6.1. Okay, so here is the data on salaries of 100 executives on a uh, such companies and then there are 10 variables uh, that potential to explain the salary that are from x1 uh, to x2 as listed in here and then the aim of this um, session is that we want to choose the best model the best in the sense of a simple model as simple as possible but you know with the uh, high accuracy or inside uh, gain um, that kind of like uh, representative with the uh, complex model the complete model okay and then we will be using uh, those four approaches that we have here in uh, doing that uh, or in achieving that goal okay so now here they have that okay this result uh here they have this result if you just are using one variable then the r squared is 61.9 percent and then the best model with just one variable is just including x1 Okay, that's how we read it. If you just want to use two variables, then the best model is by using x1 and x3. And then it gives us the R squared of 74.9% with the adjusted R squared 74.4 and CP of 195.5. And here, as this is the MSE mean squared error. Okay. Again, and so on, if you want to use just three variables in your model, then the recommended, th those three recommended variables are x1, x3, and x4, okay, with the R squared of this 83.9% and so on. And the th uh, here is if you use the complete model. Okay, use all variables, then you get the S and the CP is 11, just like in our discussion before. Like, you know, a good model, the CP is close to the P plus 1. So in here, but of course, it is a good model, then we use all the variables, so the CP is just 11. But is it really, but do we really need to use all of them? That's the question here. Okay. So then, uh, so this is kind of like the best subsets regression, okay? Um, if you're using one, two, three, all the way up to the whole 10 variables. Just looking at this, okay? Um, so how many variables should be included, should uh, be included in the model? So if based on the R squared or the R adjusted squared, then we should choose the one with the highest value in the R squared and uh, adjusted R squared. Uh, so here we can see that, okay, so 
uh, with a larger number of variables but then you see there's not much change here actually from five variables to ten variables right and even here you know we can get something like that um, and then probably you might ask why here the uh, r squared is just constant from 7 to 10 variables while in our previous videos when discussing about r squared and adjusted r squared inclusion of more variables will increase the value of r squared i think this is just a matter of rounding error so if we put it to, to two or three digits then we will see actually there is a slight increment in here okay so then what if that's based on the r squared but then if we look at the cp we also need to look at the uh, small cp and if you look at the mean squared error of or symbolized by s here we also want to choose the small s so among these options that we have to make a, you know the trade-off between these four measurements so in here i think that probably okay if i choose five here you know because there's kind of like you know really drop in the cv between a uh, model with four variables and five variables okay from 16 to 3 so i think that this should be a good one and if you look at the mean squared error is also kind of like relatively small 0 0.075 yeah here is like decreasing but you know just one digit uh, on the you know 0 0.001 which is kind of like very small okay look at the r squared adjusted is also good okay so if you want to choose five or six i will look at here this is just 0.1 percent the increase from adding one variable you know from four to five the increase in the r squared yes it is like um, around 1.4 percent from four to five um from five to six is just 0.1 percent okay so i think that uh i after considering the four uh, measurements i will choose the best model is that model with um probably five yeah i choose model with five uh explanatory variables and those five variables uh, to be included in the model are x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 okay so this is uh like a, a detailed explanation on it okay number of predictors and so on okay so with the five predictors this is how this is what we've got and then if we put it you know Put it in a graph we also get something like that and this is how you compare the cp with the value of p plus one as well so then uh yep so the conclusion is that just choose uh what is it the um, model with five predictors okay with five predictors they are x1 up to x5 should be included in the model but there are some caveats in doing this like uh, what we've discussed in the pre uh, stepwise regression um, the caveats are like you know we have uh, too many individual key tests this is particularly for the uh, stepwise procedure um so it is uh, not recommended really to select the best model uh, but you know instead for the stepwise just to select some possible uh, important ones among a large number of variables but then you need to proceed further with your model building okay um still not considering higher order terms or interaction and um, yeah while actually um, in the actual condition we might probably should consider the possibility of having higher order um, terms in our model
okay so that's how to use those uh four um selection model selection procedure and also combine with the previous one that we've learned is that the backward elimination forward selection and stepwise procedure it is expected now that given a problem or a model you can just do some more analysis in deciding which model is the best one the best fit for this data okay now for your assignment i would like you to do this problem Okay, 6.1 and then 6.2 as well um, and then 6.3 and I think can we go yep 6.3 6. uh, 6.4 is not I'd like you to do 6.6, uh, 6, okay? So 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, and then uh, jump to 6.6. .6. Here, the data is given in here, okay? 6.6, .6. Uh, you need to answer the questions in here, okay? And also... Um, and in addition to that, I'd also like for you to find your data, your own data. You can just search it online, okay? Data that is suitable for multiple regression analysis. Um, of course, it means that with uh, several explanatory variables. And then you do your uh, the procedures that we've learned here the stepwise and then this uh, what is it use the criterion here to um, determine your best model according to that data okay so i just repeat it again for your assignment i'd like you to do the questions in this book okay so number 6.1 6.2 6.3 and then you jump to 6.6, .6. okay? The data is in here. That's the fourth question. And then the fifth one is actually, I want you to find um, your own data online consisting of several uh, explanatory variables. And then you apply the methods that we've learned so far, starting from here, okay, variable uh, stepwise, uh, backward, forward, or uh, stepwise, whichever that you like. And then use the criterion here to decide on the best model fit to the data that you choose. Okay, you might do it in a group of five maximum. Okay, so that's all for the topic on uh, variable selection and model selection. Thank you.